Assalamu alaikum and a very warm welcome to today's program, Journey to Islam. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is well recognized all over the globe due to its peaceful message. Every year, thousands of people join the Jamaat, some suffering extreme difficulties along the way. Join us and hear why people want to be part of this community. What is it that makes them want to be part of the Jamaat? You, on this program, you will be hearing inspirational stories firsthand from people who have converted to Islam Ahmadiyyat. On today's program, we have Brother Muhammadu Sise, who comes from the Gambia, and who was not an Ahmadi Muslim. He has agreed to share his story with us, and he's with us, uh, with us at the studio, uh, in the studio at the moment. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Muhammadu Sise. Well, welcome to the program. First of all, I'd like to start you know, from uh, your childhood. What would you say about your uh, uh, religious background? Yes, childhood. I, I was born a Muslim, right. uh, in a Muslim family. And uh, uh, just like any other uh, boys uh, in my village, we used to go to, to the madrasa. So the imam of the village uh, taught all the children of the village. So we used to go to his compound, and then he would teach us the Quran. So in other words, uh, in those days, we learned everything by heart. Right. Yes. So, S go on. <laughs> yeah, so, well, uh, uh, we used to go to the madrasa only at night, uh, m mostly at night, right. although very rarely during the day. Yes, yeah, so we used to go at night where he would teach us, you know. So both boys and girls as well. Yeah. So would you say that you were religious right from day one? Well, I was uh, religious in the sense that, well, it was, uh, it was the tradition in the village that uh, at a certain age you go to the imam's compound where you are thought. So, but then, uh, yes, and then during the time of Eid, you know, uh, little children, uh, they are all very happy, new clothes, and then would go to the gathering for the Eid, you know. So, about whether we are very religious, no, I think we are, well, we are school children, and uh, we prayed, but n nobody actually told us, look, we've got to pray five times a day, you know. So we are just uh, the ordinary boys doing, playing and uh, going okay, to school. So that would be, say, in your very young days, yes, very as young. you were growing, yes. did you actually try to look for your creator, for example? No, I didn't actually. So it was only one day I, I did discovered a book uh, from my father's belongings, you know. Right. Right. I read it. At that, that time, I, I was in a, a secondary school. Mm -hmm. So the, the book is called Muslim Prayer Book. I think it was written by Mufti Muhammad Sadiq. Right. So it has a transliteration. It right. is written in Arabic yeah. and then English and the, and the Arabic uh, is transliterated. So in other words, I can read in Arabic, yeah. but in the transliteration. Yeah. So when I saw this book, I said, oh, that's very interesting. Then I started to teach myself how to pray from that book. So the, the imam of the village never taught me how to pray. He okay. taught me to remember some uh, some surahs Surahs. of the Holy Quran, you know. So, but the actual prayer started when I saw this book and I started to teach myself. Right. So, now what is strange about that book? Oh, the, the, the book is very interesting because it told me about God and about the uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Hadith, you know, about the importance of prayers. Yes, I said, oh, I should pray five times a day. So, so the, 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 that book actually changed my life completely. Right. So all of a sudden, I started to pray. And uh, well, of course, uh, uh, it was a young age, but that book was actually uh, the real book that started to change my life, slowly and slowly. So until uh, let, later on, I met an, uh, uh, a member of the Ahmadiyya Jamaat. Right. 
And then he told me about Ahmadiyat. And then when he told me about Ahmadiyat, I accepted straight away. But of course, he started to tell, tell me about the whole story that, you see, we live in a crisis. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he predicted the conditions of Islam, the condition of Muslims, how we would uh, be torn apart uh, through our misunderstanding of the Holy Quran. There would be so many sects, you know, and then the proofs of the Mahdi, that, uh, the, the signs of the Mahdi. He told me so many things, and I accepted. So, so with some of my friends. So you must have been very lucky in that you didn't have any struggle at all. Oh yes, I, I had a struggle, of course. I had a struggle with, with my father later on. Right. So when I accepted Ahmadiyat only, he gave me the Muslim prayer book. But actually it was the same Muslim prayer book which I found uh, in my father's belongings. Okay. So I was, I was very much delighted. Right. So, but the same point is, when I joined Ahmadiyat straight away, well, uh, the, uh, the mullahs in my country, you see, that's a tradition, it still exists, you know. Uh, the mullahs or the imams who would write. Uh, when you say mullahs, what do you mean by mullahs? You see, when I say mullahs, I actually mean maybe the, 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 this is the wrong word. Uh, when I say mullahs, I mean the imams of the country the or scholars. the village. You mean uh, the, 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 the scholars. Okay. Yes, yeah, so they yeah, write some verses of the Holy Quran on a wooden tablet. Right. And okay, they, they, this is how we read the Quran. Right. They, they would write uh, verses of the Holy Quran on a wooden tablet. Tablet, yeah. And then wash it with, uh, wash it with water. And then we used to drink it, you know. They said, uh, this water will make you clever. Right. Or, well, some say that if you don't know the Quran, then you ha have to wear amulets. So amulets are uh, verses of the Holy Quran right. written, well, on a paper, wrapped, uh, and then in leather, and then it's just like a kind of a bracelet, or you can tie it around here. So when I joined Ahmadet, I threw everything away. Why did you throw them away? Yeah, because uh, this has no, uh, nothing to do with true Islam. But who told you that? Yes, uh, my friend who uh, converted me to Ahmadiyat, he said, look, this water, in the first place, is a dirty water. So the, uh, it was never the practice of the Holy Prophet Muhammad so Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right. The whole idea of the Holy Quran is read. Read the Holy Quran, read. But uh, people telling you that if you don't know the Holy Quran, then you should put it on your arm. Right. That does not make sense. You are not reading the Quran. You are not studying the Quran, so that doesn't make sense. And this liquid which you drink, I mean, uh, it doesn't make any sense okay. at all. Let me take you back just a bit. Yes. You, you mentioned that you had a, a slight problem with your dad. What was that problem? Oh, yes, big problem. My, my father, when he knew that I joined Ahmadiyat, because my father uh, didn't know actually what was Ahmadiyat, but from what he had from friends, so uh, when I joined Ahmadiyat, he threw me out of the compound. Really? Uh, he said, you are a kafir. So it was very tough for me in those days, you know. Yes, he kicked me out. When he said kafir, what did he mean? What did he mean by kafir? Well, uh, uh, probably what he meant uh, was, was that I was, uh, I, joined, uh, I joined a group that are not recognized as Muslims. Yes. But who is supposed to recognize anybody else as a Muslim? Uh, well, the, this is the thing, maybe uh, is the scholars of, of, the, of the country at that time, because uh, many of them don't know what is the meaning of Ahmadiyat. So maybe he say, but uh, Ahmadiyat was well established in, in the country at that time. But uh, my father just kicked me out because he heard about Ahmadiyat, and people talking about Ahmadiyat uh, are not Muslims, who kicked me out and say, you are not a Muslim. Now, did you bother to find out from your dad why why any group of people should be called non-Muslims, even though they call themselves Muslims? Oh no, no, no! I, I, I did not, uh, I did not ask. I did not bother to investigate. I was just scared, you know, right. of my dad at that time, you know. Right. Right. Uh, so, what to make? What made you keep on? being a member of the Amelia uh, community? Okay, well, first, uh, let, let me tell you uh, the story. Okay, when my father kicked me out, yeah. I was staying with my friends, eating food with, the, with them, you know. And then we, when my father went to work, I used to sneak in, get some food, and then I would run away, you know. So until one day, he called me. He said, you are a kafir. 
But I don't understand how you are a kafir. Now you are a kafir, you are praying five times a day. Right. You are taking news of Abu Luson. You praying, and then before you join ah Ahmadiyat, I, I never bothered about you. You, you, you just, I, I was not worried, actually. You are free, you are doing anything you liked. Right. But now suddenly you become Ahmadi. You are praying five times a day. I see you doing a blue song. I don't, I don't understand, but I give you the freedom. Now do Masha what you Allah. like. Because, Masha I mean, I cannot understand how you are a kafir. Right. Now you are a kafir praying five times a day. And then before you join Ahmadiyat, I never bothered about you. you uh, I that never mean, cared. Before you prayed. became an um, Ahmadi, you yes. were not praying, but it was normal. Yes. Uh, see, before I joined uh, uh, Ahmadiyat, yes, I was praying, but uh, he was not bothered about me whether I was praying five times a day or not. Right. And also, I, I used to pray, but I was not, I mean, uh, I, I was not praying on a regular basis at all. Okay. Because, I mean, I, I didn't have the, 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 the spirit, the understanding uh, to pray to God, you know. What do you mean by the spirit? Well, the, the, the spirit is, is that it has n never, nobody has actually told me about God, you know, right. that God, or except uh, when I was in the secondary school, right. I studied the Bible, and actually it was the Bible who first told me that God actually exists, right. and then God punishes, especially the Old Testament, right. uh, the kings, you know, the book of kings. Right. So from there I said, oh, God exists and God punishes, yeah. and so on, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, from then on, mm -hmm. what do you see that has changed in the way you pray now and before? Okay, now, I mean, before I joined Ahmadiyat? Yeah. Oh, yes, when I joined Ahmadiyat, straight away, I started to pray regularly. Right. Even at that age, offering my Tahazud prayer, and what is tahajud? Well, is that tahajud prayer? Yes, that. tahajud means uh, late night prayers. You know, right. I mean, if you sleep and then you wake up, right. uh, say after midnight or so on, right. you wake up and then say your prayers. Did so you this is something I have never done uh, before I joined Ahmadiyat. Did you ever hear about it? No, before never. Ahmadiyat? Never. So it was only when I joined Ahmadiyat, then it means that Islam starts to come slowly to tell me that, oh, this is Islam. This is what I, I'm supposed to do as a Muslim. Right. Oh, dear. So it means uh, be, before I joined uh, Ahmadiyat, I was not a good Muslim at all. <laughs> no, nobody told me this is what Islam is, you know. Okay. Okay. It was only when I joined Ahmadiyat then I got the understanding that uh, as a member of the Ahmadiyat Jamaat, actually, you have to pray to God. You, you have to learn to behave to your parents. You have to do so many things, you know. So all... It, it was Ahmadiyat who really brought all these things to me. I see. Can, now, let me move further on this point. Yes. From then on yes. up till the present stage where yes. you are now, Yes. can you tell me any changes that have taken place in your prayer, the way you see God? Oh, yes. Uh, the way I see God is now a different, uh, it's a different pedestal now. I believe that he exists. Uh, and actually, the, the most important thing about my belief now, apart from believing that there is a God, and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of God, uh, ah Ahmadiyya tells me about the promised Messiah who was Alayhi Salam, uh, who was uh, prophesied by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he would come in the latter days. Right. And then also, we are very lucky that we have got uh, Hilafat. Right. So Hilafat is something, uh, it's a high spiritual office that was uh, prophesied by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So all these are, uh, have brought a lot of changes in my life now that, okay, I'm lucky, I belong to, the, to a Jamaat that cares what I am doing. If they don't hear about me, they find out, oh, what's wrong with Brother Sisi? Let's find out. So I belong to a community that cares. Right. We've got a Halifa that guides us. I so there, there's a massive d d difference between now and Two when years before I joined Ahmadiyat. Okay. Yeah. Now, you had mentioned Khilafat. Mm. This you talk about successorship, isn't it? Yes. Tell me, the others haven't got a, a Khalifa. Yes. So what is wrong with that? 
Well, they, uh, they haven't got a halifa, so therefore it is just like you are in a boat right. without a captain. Okay. That is very, it's very, very unsafe dangerous. to be on that boat. Because I was once a seaman. Right. I can't imagine to be sailing uh, on board a ship, you know, where there is no captain. Right. It can drift anywhere. The storms can just... Okay, now, the, the biggest difference is the Halifa. Right. The uh, Halifa unites us. It's through the Halifa that uh, we are united. Right. And it's through the Halifa. And then his continuous preaching to us, right. and, and then the Ahmad being founded, that all this tells us that there's a massive difference between Ahmadiyat and the other Muslims. The other Muslims, okay, fine, they are Muslims, uh, they are Muslims, they believe in la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, they are Muslims, that's fine, they are our brothers, but they have no leader. Right. They have no, so this is the difference, so we have got a leader, but they don't have a leader. So actually they are disunited, and uh, I mean, there is so much hatred between themselves. Them, they, they issue fatwas against each other. We right. don't. They're the people who blow each other's mosques. Right. We don't do that. We can't do that. Right. We saw the true Islam. So you see, the uh, the leadership. Yes. In terms of Khilafat yes. as the main difference, if you like, between the Ahmadis and the non ahmadi Muslims. Oh, yes, so they, they, this is the greatest difference. And in fact, it, it's a very important thing, you know, right. because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he prophesied about uh, the coming of the Hilafats on the precept of prophethood. prophethood okay. He said, said that uh, prophethood will remain with you as long as Allah wills. Okay. Then afterwards, um, Hilafat would come. Right. Then Hilafat would come, uh, and then, uh, as long as uh, Allah wills, yeah. and then afterwards, well, then uh, kingship would come. Uh, there will be disunity among the Muslims. Yeah. Uh, very terrible despots who would rule among the Muslims, kings, yeah. and so on. And then uh, afterwards, then Hilafat would come on the precept of prophethood. prophethood. So, so we are very lucky. So this is the big difference and be between us and them. What do the others uh, believe in then? Do well, they believe uh, in prophethood? Well, okay, the, uh, the, the other Muslims, uh, to, to be fair to them, they also believe in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Okay, but among them also they believe that uh, Imam Mahdi would come. Right. Yes, and they also believe that Nabi Isa alayhi salam would come. So right. in other words, two personages would come, all for the benefit of Islam. Okay. Yeah, so th this is the wrong precept. Okay, they are right by say, saying that Imam Mahdi would come, but he has not yet come. Right. This is their belief. They, they believe that Nabi Salam will come back, but he has not uh, come back. But of course, our interpretation of Nabi Salam is different from theirs. Right. Our interpretation of Mahdi, Mahdi, Imam Mahdi is also different from theirs. What is the difference? Well, for first, uh, we believe that we believe in. Uh, um, uh, Nabi Salam was a great prophet of God, but he was sent, he was a messenger to the Bani Israel, okay. to the uh, people, the children of Israel. Yeah. But he's dead. Okay. Like any other prophet of God, he's a human being. He couldn't live forever. Right. And, uh, see, he existed over 2,000 years ago. It is just not possible that a human being would live up to 2,000 years. Right. And then after all, there are so, so many verses of the Holy Quran that saw that uh, he's dead. Okay. And then, although I think their greatest problem is when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Nabi Isa Alayhi Salaam would come. Right. So then suddenly they said, oh, probably it's the same Nabi Isa Alayhi Salaam who, who was sent to Bani Israel. And then also the, this verse of the Holy Quran, which they did not understand, I mean, right. they do not understand where Allah said that uh, uh, they did not kill him, referring right. to Nabi Isa Alayhi Salaam, they did not kill him, they did not crucify him. Right. And at the end of that verse, Allah said, uh, Allah raised him to himself. Right. So from that they said, oh, Nabi Salih Salam is alive. So Muhammad Salih Salam said that he would come back. So uh, what do you mean? You say that Allah did not raise him to the skies? Oh, no, 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 because uh, Allah ever said that Allah Samai, he didn't, uh, he didn't say, say that uh, he raised him to uh, the skies. Right. He said, okay, Bal Rafaula ha ilayhi. Yeah, on the contrary, okay, Allah raised him to himself. Right. Yes. So, but that is a metaphorical language. It, okay. does, not, it does not mean the physical uh, uplift of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as like a spaceman. No, okay. that never existed. 
But does that also mean that uh, Allah is only upstairs according to their interpretation? Well, uh, of yes, a little sad, you know. Allah actually is everywhere. You see, if so, for Nabi Isa alayhi salam, you see, it's a great misunderstanding of the Holy Quran. Because in the, in the Holy Quran, Allah said, I will cause you to die, right. then I will raise you. So, so in or, other words, if you follow the chronological order, right. death must first take place. Okay. After death, then raising up will take place. Okay. So, but that uh, raising up, again, it's, it's a metaphorical language which they fail to understand. Okay. You see? Okay. Now, let me take you back to Khilafat. Yes. Tell me your, pers your own personal experiences with Khilafat. Okay, my personal experience with the Hilafat, I think... Because you mentioned the importance of it. Oh, yes. For the Jamaat as a, as a whole. Oh, but yes. What were you asking? I, I think my first experience was when I joined Ahmadiyat in 1968, at the time of the third Khalif. So I was so lucky that the, when I joined Ahmadiyat, the, the, Khalif, the, 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 the third Khalif uh, came to West Africa during his right. tour. Okay. And then at that time I was probably two years or three years inside Ahmadiyyad. Okay. So that, that was the first glimpse and experience I had about the Khalifa. Oh, this is the Khalifa. You see, uh, he's mentioned by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, his job is to unite the Muslims right. and guide us, you know. So that was the first ex experience. So when he came, I, I was in the Gambia, I was near him all the time. Right. So uh, on one prayer, I saw a man standing. So while we were saying the prayers, the man didn't pray. So then uh, after the prayers, I asked, I said, is this man a Muslim? Why is that he, they, they said yes. Why is that he didn't pray? So then they explained to, to me that he is the security guard of the uh, Khalifa. Right. So I was, because I mean, everybody's praying and he didn't pray. So, so, uh, so, <laughs> so, so then, uh, yeah. what has that done uh, for you mm. spiritually? Oh yes, it just strengthened my faith in God. It strengthened my faith and then Allah blessed me uh, like uh, every person on earth. Yeah. You see, uh, the blessing of Allah is just, uh, it's just like a rainfall. When the rain falls, it falls on, uh, on all, all, all the land. Right. Yeah, so it is up to you what kind of crop you want to grow. Okay. So when the rain falls, it falls on, on, on the soil of the Muslims or Christians and so on. So uh, as Muslims, you, you follow God properly. Allah shows you wonderful dreams to strengthen your faith because uh, the, the way to God is a bumpy ride. There are problems on the way. So if you assist, so Allah will guide you in some wonderful, do you get some true dreams and so on, all this straighten your faith that, oh, God exists. And God says that if you follow him, this is what will happen. Can you share one of side dreams with us? Oh, yes, wonderful. So one time it was 19, I think it was 1982, 83. Uh, I was a seaman at that time. So I was ship docked in a port called Taranto in okay. Italy. Right. So uh, from there, the captain said that uh, the disciple would go to Karachi. I said, great. When you go to Karachi, I can go to Rabua. Right. But unfortunately, the disciple never went there. Instead, we went to Bombay. Right. So anyway, so at, uh, at Taranto in Italy, I found it very difficult to know the prayer time. But Mahrib was my problem because uh, I couldn't see the sun. <coughs> it was very <coughs> hard me. for me. So, so then, uh, I, I used to go to, uh, to the town. I could not speak uh, Italian. So I used to ask the people, uh, in English, <coughs> what time is sunset? Uh, Almanac and so on. I didn't know. Right. So I tried and tried and tried. I didn't know the time for, uh, um, for Mahri prayer. So then I said to myself, the Holy Prophet Muhammad so said that you can ask God for everything, even your shoelace. Right. Ah, I said, that's it. Wonderful idea. Then I said, oh, then I prayed to God. I said, Allah, you want us to pray five times a day, as you mentioned in the Holy Quran. Look at me. I have a problem. You bear witness that I've got a problem. I cannot speak Italian. I, you see that I've made an attempt. I'll go around asking people what is uh, sunset and all these things. Nobody, nobody knew what I was talking about. I said, Allah, please tell me what, oh, oh, please Allah, show me the time of Mary prayer. Okay. Wonderful. Allah wants, us to, uh, Allah wants us to pray five times a day. Then in a dream, 
I saw the uh, Naib Amir of the Gambia, right. the president of the Ahmadiyya Jamaat in the Gambia, plus another member of the Jamaat. So when I saw them in a dream, I asked them, I know I told them I've got a problem. Did they ask, they told me, what's your problem? I said, I don't know the time of Marib. And immediately they told me the, um, uh, the time. Right. And that time was not Gambian time. It was an Italian time. So when they told me, they said, this is the time of Marib. Then when I woke up, I said, this is express divine revelation. Allah is telling me, this is the time. And then I started to pray according to that time. And then after a few days, I saw the sun set. The, the, you know, when the sun set, it's just like a football. And then when it disappears completely in the horizon, in the sea, yeah. you know, that sunset actually. So when I saw the time of the sunset, and then the dream I had, I said, Allah Akbar, Allah exists. Yes. So this tells me that prayers is something which is so important that, well, I said to myself, well now, I asked God to tell me about the time for prayer. Allah has showed me. Yeah. Then I should not joke about my prayers. This is one of the very many, many dreams to straighten my... One of the... But this, I could say that this is my... Fav, well, one of my favorite dreams. Okay. Favorite dreams. I'm sure you would have uh, liked to share so many others with us. But oh, yes. Time will of course, of course. But before we go, do you have any message for the viewers? Oh, yes. Uh, the, the message for, for the viewers is that... Um, Islam is a religion of peace. Right. It's a peace and a religion of security. Law for all, hatred for none. Okay. So now it is very good to study all religions okay. because uh, the beginning of all uh, religions is from God. Yes. So to investigate about uh, Ahmadiyyad. Uh, uh, Ahmadiyyad claims to, to be the true Islam. Yes. Although now we live in a political crisis, world crisis, that we've got the IS in, uh, in Syria and Iraq, yeah. they, are, they, they are Muslims. Uh, yes, they are Muslims. They believe in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but the way they are carrying things out is just horrible. So, of course, many, uh, because even from my experience, so when I'm doing the tabli right. at uh, Camberwell Green every week, every Saturday, I give leaflets. Yeah. So, some people say, oh, you are Muslim? I say, yes, Alhamdulillah, yes, I am a Muslim. Oh, you are terrorists, you kill people. I say, I don't kill, and you also, you don't kill. So, it's some misguided people. So, what I will tell, uh, what I tell the viewers is that, do not li listen to, yes, it's very sad about the killings that take place, yeah. of course, by Muslims, beheading, and all these things. Don't you think that Islam is about that? Right. Islam is peace, so if you study Islam, is Islam, there is no compulsion in religion, no compulsion. Islam never compels people to join Islam. Islam never compels. So you're, you'll be telling viewers about uh, the, the injunctions of the Holy Quran yes. about even killing one person is tantamount to killing the whole world. Yes, that's exactly. So yes. that is not Islam then? No, no, that, that's not Islam. And then uh, we, uh, Ahmadiyya people, want to ab about us, there's so, so many things. We don't, uh, our two mosques were bombed in Pakistan some years ago. They killed uh, some worshippers there. But we leave everything in the hands of God. Right. Through, through the direction of our Khalifa. Right. You see, what we can do is to pray for the misguided people, but we don't demonstrate in the streets or retaliate. No, no, no. Okay. Yes. So I, what I gather is to you telling viewers that if they look to Ahmadiyyad, yes. then they'll find the true Islam. Yes, they will find the true Islam because there okay. is unity in uh, Ahmadiyyad, there is love in Ahmadiyyad. They, they, uh, they do not care whether you come from Asia, Africa, and so on. There is complete brotherhood in Ahmadiyyad. Dear viewers, this is all uh, we have time for. Uh, we thank you very much for your time and patience. Uh, this is all we have time for uh, from the studios of uh, MTA in uh, Morden in London. Uh, until next time, Assalamu alaikum and a very warm welcome to you all. Assalamu alaikum.
Muhammadur Rasulullah.